The astute among you will, I'm sure, look upon this scene before the camera and think, ah, the heat of absorption of short chain alkanes onto the surface of activated carbon. That's what this video is about. And you would be correct. And the question that starts all of this is, how can you generate heat from an inflammable gas, in this case butane, without combusting it? Well, this is one way. All you need to demonstrate this is one of these special test tubes made from activated carbon, which you can get from a bubble water bottle, this video not sponsored by bubble, and squirt some lighter gas into it. And if you're holding it in your hand while you do that, you'll actually feel it get warm. The things you discover during a spell of boredom, eh? Now it's all very well me telling you that it gets hot, but let's actually bring some science into it, shall we? I've got a FLIR camera here, so you can see a visual representation of the heat on camera. Reds represent hotter parts of the image, blue the colder parts, and yellows and greens are somewhere in the middle. Think predator vision. And you can see, when I squirt some butane into the carbon tube, the exterior quite quickly begins to warm up. In this case, reaching 30 odd degrees. Now let's try to quantify this. To some degree at least, this isn't going to be scientifically accurate. I've filled a syringe with 20 cc's of butane, and I'm going to inject this into the tube, and we'll try to measure the temperature rise. So that's looking to be around 1.5 degrees, with an ambient temperature of 24. So assuming this is pure butane, there are going to be a lot of assumptions here, we have around 800 times 10 to the minus 6 moles in 20 cc's which would combust to release a little over 2 kilojoules of energy. Now, we're clearly not getting that here. We've got a rise in temperature of 1.5 degrees, or to sound vaguely like I know what I'm doing, 1.5 Kelvin. So taking the specific heat of this carbon to be 1 kilojoule per kilogram, we have an actual yield of energy of 15 joules. Not a lot, admittedly, but it's a start. And I've got some other inflammable gases here. I've got this value air duster from a land where everything costs a pound, which is probably some sort of fluorohydrocarbon, either di or trifluorethane, I'm not really sure. And that seems to reach slightly higher temperatures than the butane. And I've got this PCB cleaner, which is mostly hexane, another alkane. And this is a liquid at room temperature, but as it evaporates, it still gets absorbed onto the carbon. But this time we're only seeing around 27 degrees, so there are definitely some variations and there may be better options than butane if we're looking for maximum energy output. So what's actually going on here to generate this heat? What even is adsorption? Well, unlike absorption, like water being absorbed into a sponge, adsorption is just something adhering to the surface, not actually penetrating. And that's the reason for the activated carbon, which is our adsorbent because it has an enormous surface area for the gas, the adsorbate, to interact with. This is an attractive interaction between the gas and the carbon molecules, similar to two opposing magnets attracting. And it just so happens that this process is exothermic. Energy is released in the form of heat whenever this happens. That's the simple explanation anyway, without making this video an hour long. OK, so it gets warm. Great. But is there any practical use for this? You're hardly going to heat your house on it, let's be realistic. But could we generate an electric current from it, perhaps? Well, the most obvious way to do that would be to use a Peltier module. In theory, as long as this side stays cool, heating up this one will generate a current. So if we can get a decent thermal coupling between this and the carbon, maybe we'll get a usable output. Let's see. So I've just secured the carbon to the hot side of the module with some Kapton tape, and you can see just how small that contact area is. A cylinder really isn't the best shape for this, but we should still be able to see the effect. So I've got an ammeter hooked up to the terminals of the Peltier module. When I spray in some butane, our peak current is nearly 10 milliamps. Not bad. You can run LEDs on 10 milliamps. Our potential, however, is a measly 30 millivolts, and I'm being generous there. That's 0.3 milliwatts. Okay, that's not going to be especially useful to us. At least the way I've done it, it's not going to be. 
there are loads of ways you can make this more efficient. The key advantage, I think, of generating energy this way is no combustion products like carbon dioxide are produced because we're not burning anything. Clean energy from fossil fuels? Why are we not doing this yet? Well, I'm sure if it were feasible it would have been done a long time ago. But at the very least, this video shows that it is possible. Food for thought. See you in the next one.